These white chocolate lemon blondies are gooey, super moist, soft. They're so delicious. You can taste the white chocolate, the lemon, and they're my favorite. Let's make them. You're going to need some softened, unsalted butter. Make sure it's very softened. Mix it with an electric mixer. Add your granulated sugar, and then you want to add some lemon zest and lemon extract. I like to add the eggs one at a time. Make sure to scrape the bottom and sides of the bowl, and then add the flour, salt, and baking powder. I love white chocolate. If you don't like white chocolate, just omit it. I almost forgot the lemon juice. So fold in the white chocolate, add the lemon juice, and it's going to be a very thick batter. Make sure to use an eight by eight baking dish because these don't really rise that much. So they're gonna be super thin if you use a nine by nine. I bake these for 25 minutes. Start checking them at the 22 minute mark. Let them cool for about 20 minutes before adding the glaze. The glaze is simple. It's just powdered sugar, lemon juice, and milk. And then you want to let these cool completely before indulging because you won't really taste that much of the lemon flavor if um, you eat them warm. So definitely eat these cool and enjoy. I know the internet is obsessed with sourdough, but I like my bread to be a lot softer. It doesn't get any better than Japanese milk bread or shokupan. It literally feels like you are eating a cloud. Let me show you how to make this. We're going to start by making tanzong, which is basically a roux made of flour and milk or water and helps make your bread a lot more soft. One third cup of milk and two tablespoons of bread flour. Cook and stir this on low heat until it starts to look like a thick base. Two third cups of warm milk, two and a quarter teaspoons of active dry yeast. Rest this for five to ten minutes. Then add the tang song, one egg, a quarter cup of sugar, teaspoon of salt, two tablespoons of milk powder, and two and a half cups of bread flour. Now you're going to knead this for five to seven minutes until the dough starts to pull away from the edges of the bowl. Then add four tablespoons of softened butter and knead again for five to seven minutes until the dough becomes really smooth, soft, and stretchy. And let it rise until it doubles in size, just like this. Divide it into three equal pieces. Roll it out into a large thin circular shape. Then fold it into thirds and roll it up in the other direction as tightly as you can. Tightly seal this roll and place this into your loaf pan. One egg yolk, tablespoon of milk, whisk it up and generously brush all over the bread. Now we're going to proof this for a second time. Once it's puffed up like this, give it another coating of the egg wash. And now this goes into the oven. Oh my god, it smells so good. I'm sharing with you Libyan fadila. It's a delicious, super flaky bread that takes a lot of time, but it's absolutely worth it. The actual dough is pretty basic. All it is, flour, egg, splash of vinegar and baking powder. And then you'll want to gradually add some more water and then knead it. I'd say the secret ingredient for this is a lot of patience because at every stage you'll need the dough to rest. Of course here it's very much sped up, but what I had done is I allowed for at least half an hour to 45 minutes between each step. The longer you allow it to rest, the nicer your fadila comes out. Anyways, you'll need to divide your dough into equal parts. Mine came to around 16 pieces. Using veg or sunflower oil, you want to stretch it out as thinly as possible and it's okay if it rips. Fold it into a square and allow for as much air to be trapped in as possible. And in Libya, we double fold it. So work on your first eight and allow them to rest and then fold them into the second eight, if that makes sense. Cook it on medium heat for around eight minutes on each side. And I like to have mine with honey, but you can pretty much have it with anything. And that's it. I hope you like it and bye for now.
The spinach, feta and zadar pies are so good and so easy to make. Very similar to barek, except I used puff pastry instead of phyllo. And I make these nearly every single Ramadan and everyone loves them. I'll show you how I wrote my spinach as well because I shared it on my stories the other day and you guys loved it. I just assumed everyone did it this way. I just empty the bag out into the colander, pour over a full kettle of boiling water and then rinse with cold water under the tap. And then I just squeeze out the excess water with my hands. That avoids soggy bottom pastry. And that's it. How simple was that? Now you can chop the spinach and then mix that together with some crumbled feta cheese and some shredded mozzarella or cheddar i usually use whatever i have i added ricotta cheese just because i needed it using up but you don't have to i seasoned it with garlic powder pepper and just a touch of salt because feta is salty enough and a generous amount of palestinian zadar mix it together and then fill the pies however you want or pasties pastries rolls whatever you want to call them they all taste amazing regardless so the name's not really that deep is it so just seal the edges brush with an egg wash for that golden finish top with sesame seeds if you like and then bake in the oven or air fry and enjoy. I wasn't sure if I wanted waffles, pancakes, or French toast, so I combined all three. Do you know what's better than a cookie dough croissant? A creme brulee croissant. It's so delicious and easy to make and it goes great with a cup of tea. I basically got a store-bought croissant, covered the top in caramelized sugar and filled it with a luscious creme brulee custard. Start off by heating some milk in a pot on low heat until it starts to bubble. Meanwhile, in a separate bowl, combine egg yolks, sugar and vanilla extract. Then add cornstarch until it's smooth. Slowly pour the hot milk into the mixture whilst whisking. Don't pour it all at once, otherwise you'll end up with scrambled eggs. Return the mixture back to the pot and stir it on a low heat until it thickens this will take about 20 minutes patience is key here avoid raising the heat too high or you'll overheat it and it will taste like sweet scrambled eggs so keep stirring until it becomes thick take it off the heat and add some softened butter and mix well transfer it to a plate and cover it in cling film chill it in the fridge for at least one to four hours for the hard sugar simply combine water and sugar in a pan don't stir it heat it until it turns amber once it turns amber carefully dip your croissants in the molten caramel be careful because it's very hot let it harden for a minute or two Fill the croissants with the luscious custard and that's it it's easy peasy lemble squeezy to get rid of the hard sugar from the pan just fill it with water once all the sugar has melted let it cool down and pour it down the drain if you don't want to waste it you can add some tea bags and make caramel tea if you're absolutely useless in the kitchen but you want to make something really impressive this eat make this roll just listen to this this is only two ingredients guys two ingredients and you probably already have it in your kitchen this recipe is so easy to make you can get your kids to make it your parents to make this and if you can't make this i just don't know what to say anymore you need extra special help that's out of my depth or just don't go to the kitchen anymore anyways before i start bullying everyone and um, this is how i made it so i got some sheet kebabs i laid them into the puff pastry and cut them into sizes into quarters then i roll them over and fold in the edges and then i get a fork to press on a pattern and this will seal the pastry completely so it doesn't come out then i get a knife to knead that up because you just want that professional touch anyways i score different patterns along the pastry to distinguish between the chicken and the lamb this also gives it a cute professional touch and this is where i tell you do not believe social media i'm a massive liar because technically i don't just use two ingredients i whisked an egg to do an egg wash so when they bake they come out all crispy and golden and i'm even more of a liar because i found some black sesame seeds so i just put those on top as well so you don't have to do that but if you want to be amazing like me then yeah go ahead anyways cut them into sections freeze or bake straight away and they turn out perfect bye a smash burger will always be better than a regular burger. You get the perfect ratio of meat to toppings, so let's make some. Divide a pound of ground beef into four equal sections, then shape each section into a round compacted ball. Pop these in the fridge while you prep your toppings. I like to do onion, tomatoes, lettuce, and pickles. Add your ball of meat to a super hot pan and flatten it out using parchment paper in between. Careful not to go too thin because this can dry out the meat. You can also use two spatulas like this to flatten out your patties if you don't have a burger press. Top these off with some cheddar cheese, cover until it's melty, take it off the heat, and then 
toast up some buns. For the burger sauce, combine mayonnaise, ketchup, mustard, grated pickles, pickle juice, garlic powder, paprika, onion powder, salt and pepper. Build your burger starting with the lettuce on the bottom, then tomato. Make sure you season that tomato and then the rest of your toppings and enjoy. This year I have discovered my love for almond flavored desserts and one of my favorite desserts in this category are definitely these amazing almond frangipan blondies. These blondies honestly taste like an adult and more royal version of a regular blondie because they have that amazing almond frangipan layer on top which is full of almond extract and ground almonds but then they also have that beautiful buttery blondie layer at the bottom so let's make these delicious blondies together today. The first step to making this amazing dessert is going to be making our blondie batter and so into a bowl you're going to combine your brown sugar with your butter as well as the eggs and egg yolk. We are then going to whisk this mixture together really well until everything is well combined and then to this we are going to add our extracts, so a little bit of vanilla extract and then a little bit of almond extract as well to tie that beautiful almond flavor together. To this we are going to fold in all of our dry ingredients and then combine everything together to make our amazing buttery decadent blondie batter. At this point, if you bake this, you would make the most amazing blondies, but since we are making almond frangipan blondies, we are going to layer this blondie batter and then move on to our almond frangipan layer. And so into the same bowl, we are going to combine our white sugar, butter, a little bit of vanilla extract, and then again our almond extract because those two flavors go so wonderfully together. We are then going to add an egg to this mixture so that everything is held together really well and all the ingredients bind to one another beautifully as everything bakes together. Finally to this we are going to add almond flour. I would recommend using almond flour instead of ground almonds just because almond flour has a wonderful texture which is perfect for that frangipan layer. And for my secret, I like to use a butter knife to swirl these amazing layers together because I find that when they bake together, they taste all that more wonderful. And then when you take a bite, you get that amazing blondy flavor with that frangipan mixed into it, which tastes absolutely heavenly. And because I like even more almonds, I'm going to add more chopped almonds on top. You can also add slivered almonds at this point. And then we're going to bake this beautiful dessert until it is fully baked according to the instructions in the video caption. I promise you that while this dessert bakes, your house is going to smell absolutely amazing and everyone will be fascinated as to what dessert you are making. Once our almond frangipan blondies have cooled completely, I like to cut them up into little squares so that everyone can enjoy and then top them off with powdered sugar because I find that that just elevates them and makes them look that much more beautiful and pretty to eat because who doesn't like eating pretty and beautiful desserts? Honestly, I'm about to go make another batch of these blondies because watching this video and doing this voiceover is making me hungry and you should definitely do that too.